Yeah, let's talk. He takes a deep breath. The reason I was so hesitant to discuss Aya or the Enforcers for that matter is because... Aya's your sister. I used to work for her. (laughs) You are an Enforcer? Heavens, no. No, you don't seem the I went in and assisted in the infirmary infirmary or morgue whenever they needed an extra extra pair of hands. Healers, good healers, are few and far between in these parts. It's what I always wanted to do, to apply my skills where it was most needed. Helping those who dedicated their lives to ensuring our safety was an honor. An honor? But, but? Then the hunter murders began. I got to examine the first body, if you can even call it that, with the state it was in. But something shifted within headquarters afterwards. I listened intently, taking all this in. A little perplexed, a little caught off guard. They started treating me differently, calling me in less. Then when I was there, they kept me clear of any hunters. It became quite clear they didn't want me there any longer. Hmm. Information was being kept from me. Important information about the victims I was supposed to be examining. Then the Aya incident, incident happened. Then another dead hunter turned up. This was when they were revoked my access, took away all my notes. It's a cover-up. Notes? He nods, glancing over at the kitchen counter. I may have a Piper retrieve them for me, if you'd like to take them. There's not much, but you're welcome to them. I'd so love to take them. Yes, why the fuck wouldn't I? Yes, I'll take them. He opens one of the kitchen drawers, pulling out a pile of parchment. Do British people call them draws? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know British people. Draws is what Southern drawers. people call your underwear. <laughs> it's also what you call the drawers in a drawer. <laughs> in a set of drawers. A chest Drawer. of drawers. Chest of drawers. Draws. Anyway, pulling out a pile of parchment, then what looks like a fake wooden bottom. Ooh, the notebook is nestled safely beneath it. Here. Here. Oh, it's your Let's me fuck, fuck off. I tuck it away inside my jacket for later. So why were you so afraid to tell me this? You did nothing wrong. You were helping people. He offers me a sorry gaze, his brow furrowed, his fingers curled into fists at his side. They do not like people talking about it. About the deaths. Many of us have our suspicions now, but they know. Mm. They will seemingly do anything to keep what's happening quiet. Like not telling me who the latest victim is. Exactly. I wasn't even sure if I could discuss, but I wanted to so badly that I pushed my apprehension aside. You were right to trust them. They're on our side. They're scared too. Oh, Gus. I just want all of this to be over. What are we going to do? We're defecting. I smile like, and Ezra's expression lights up. Ask. We're about to break into the dungeon. <laughs> like, you know, I'm glad you bring it up. <laughs> you have a plan? I do. <laughs> I have a plan. So. <laughs> I just think again. <laughs> I look deep into his eyes, hoping I can wash away some of the weight that he carries. The toll that has taken on him is obvious. I can't do this without you, Ezra. I need you. Anything you need, Sarah. I trust you. That was easy. I smile. (laughs) I smile, taking his hand when he offers it, and he squeezes mine tightly. Together. 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 Piper and I are going into the dungeons to see if we can locate Aya. If we can talk to her, I think we might have a start. Everything leads back to when she was arrested, as far as I can tell. How on earth are you going to get down there without being caught? Magically. That's where you come in. It may involve you and August working together, though. Does Gus know about this little plan of yours? Yeah. I grimace, waving my hand in a so-so gesture. Partially? You're lucky I trust you, Sarah. But, really, I'm here for you. Just tell me when. Thank you, Ezra. Now, how can I find Finn? Why, a secret passageway, of course. You're in the right place. <laughs> a little winky face. Little winky face. I love his character design. He bends down, kicking aside a colorful rug to reveal the hidden hatch. 
It creaks loudly when he opens it, a gust of cold, stale wind rising from its depths. In you pop. We'll look for about ten minutes, then when you see candlelight, it's the, so- the third door on the left. In I pop. Don't be alarmed by any of the clan members. They're all friendly. 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 I nod, taking a deep breath. I lower myself into the hatch, gazing up at him with a smile. See you around. Bye. In we go. One of the dungeons. The incessant drip, drip, drip of water guides me forward through the darkness, the stench of damp and decay filling my nostrils as I sink deeper into the corridors of the catacombs. The pitch black path is long and winding, and the only sound I can hear is the tap of my boots on wet stone. What? Uh, and all the paths that lead us there are winding, <laughs> and there are many things that I would like to say to you, but I don't know how. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm done. Because maybe you're gonna be the one that saves me. After all. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, wonder <laughs> Okay. I'm glad we got that out of our systems. <laughs> what was that? I was like singing. I was like singing fucking K pop songs earlier. Weren't we all? Aren't we all? Yeah. I was too. I was listening to Girl Girls Generation. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I, I was listening to G Idol today. I was very excited. Nice. Eventually, I see candlelight flickering ahead, and it would appear that I finally found life. Well. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, they're dead. I get it. It's very funny. I remember to look for the third door on the left, just as Ezra had instructed, but as I approach it, I find it wide open. Oh, no. (gasps) (laughs) This is exactly what you'd think a bedroom in the catacombs would look like. (laughs) He's in character. Golden, Golden gilded matching furniture. He bought that furniture and had it carried down into the catacombs. I peek inside, and the stark contrast between the literal tomb outside and what I find is find in what is most definitely Finn's quarters is astounding. Look, he's got love letters on the desk over here, and also a skull. And drawings. Anyway. Before I get the chance to take in the view, a cool breeze brushes past me, ruffling my hair and sending goose flesh prickling across my skin. There he is. And that's not him. A small, darkly clad girl appears before me in a flash. Her eyes, the brightest crimson as they bore into me. She stands with her head tilted and a toothy grin crossing dark lips. Are you lost, human? No. She stares me down, wide-eyed and quite clearly trying to intimidate me, but she seems playful. It's a cat and mouse game. I'm here to see Finn. She relaxes at the sound of his name and her striking gaze sweeps over me like a caress. She shrugs, pursing her lips. So you're the one he won't shut up about, huh? Well, you do smell good, I guess. Oh, he talks about me? Smell good. (laughs) I'm... Is Finn here? She licks a fang, and I notice how similar some of her more human quirks are to his. She's far less poised than him, but I almost feel like... That may be on purpose. I'm in Finn's territory here, neutral territory, so I quell the desire to be defensive, even though her eyes are the color of a creature who drinks human blood. Well, yes. He's somewhere. Here. Around. Okay. Thank you. Doing stuff. Okay. Thank you. Helpful. Her smile widens, and she turns to poke at a crystal decanter of whiskey that sits nestled in the corner of one of his many bookcases. So, are you part of the clan? No, I'm the cleaning lady. Yeah, she's fucking... A quick nod, almost too quick to catch. I am. She pours the rich amber liquid into a glass, swirls it, sniffs it with a dramatic grimace, and sets it aside untouched. Her nose is still crinkled and barely disguised disgust when she looks at me again. I wish that thing you're looking for would stop killing hunters, you know. Because that means more of your type will come. Okay. Then more enforcers, which is the last thing we need in this shitty town. Agree. I hear footsteps, loud ones that echo off the stonework in the hallway. Hey! <laughs> uh, your pajamas! <laughs> 
Are you it's surprised? It's jamming! It's Jim Jams! <laughs> it's Jim Jams. Okay, are we ready? Are you ready to go? I don't remember his voice yeah, either, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Jim say Jim Jams it. are all unbuttoned. He was posh. I don't remember anything else. I, I don't think it gets posher than August, but I will- I'll, I'll, I'll do something. It was posh, but it was less haughty. Sarah. And not any less thoughty. Probably more thoughty. More, <laughs> more overly thoughty. I suspect he knew I was here, but his shock is charming nonetheless. He looks at the girl who throws him a decidedly wicked wolfish grin. The picture of innocence. Raven, are you being nice? No. The girl, Raven, shrugs, sidle sidling up to him and resting her head on his shoulder. She rolls her eyes hard enough that I'm surprised they don't fall back in her skull. I actually think Raven's voice should be different. I think she should sound like Azula. Hit it. I don't think I can do sound it. Sound like Azula. I, I don't think I can, but I, I can try. Do it. I don't remember what she sounds like. I just remember the vibe. Because it's so sharp. Sorry, I'm trying to think of any yes, lines that she's Dad. ever had. <laughs> I'm about to celebrate becoming an only child. <laughs> I don't sound like her. She Finn's face like drops. Emily, Emily Elizabeth from Clifford. <laughs> she does. Finn's face drops, his eyes narrow. I get the impression that if he could blush, his cheeks would be the prettiest shade of pink. I stifle a laugh, and with obvious delight, Raven notices. Raven. Oh, we're gonna embarrass you, fool! That's Me and Raven so are on the same Raven. team now. It's the future I can see. She laughs. The sound... <laughs> <laughs> the sound loud and obnoxious, but somehow still charming. She shoves him playfully, but Finn remains stern. Are you going to introduce me to your friend? <laughs> the suggested waggle of her eyebrows doesn't go unnoticed, and Finn sighs heavily, offering me an apologetic smile. Sarah, this is Raven. She's... M I'm his kid. She's annoying! I love her! There's a low, exasperated rumble of a warning in Finn's throat, and I find myself enjoying the way he bristles in her presence. Finn throws her a death glare, and she proceeds to look guilty, but just a little. He raises a single dark brow at her, and after a quiet scoff, she enthusiastically steps forward and offers me her hand. It's really nice to meet you, Sarah. This guy hasn't stopped gushing about you, so thanks for giving him something new to mope over. I do not mope. Look how angry! <laughs> Raven rolls her eyes, and I finally take her hand. Her grip is firm, and I wonder if she might be trying to unnerve me when her startling eyes widen exponentially. Hurt him, and I'll eat you, got it? I wasn't gonna hurt- I, mean, I was gonna ask him to do me a favor, I'm just kinda- I open my mouth to respond, but before I get the chance, she's laughing again. Finn looks mortified, and he carefully pries her hand from mine and ushers her towards the door. It's time for you to go, I think. Raven pouts, raising both her hands in defense. I was joking, obviously. I would get along with Raven. I like her already. What a coincidence, we like you too. <laughs> yeah! She offers me a little wave and rises on her tiptoes to press a kiss to Finn's cheek. He looks at her with unabashed fondness, a small smile creeping onto his lips. Aww. Go. Say hello to Lux for me and be good. He runs his hand over her shorn scalp and he sw she swats him playfully, scoffling much, scoffing much like a teenager would in an embarrassing parent. We stand a single dad. I'll do more than say hello. Bye, Sarah. Hi. I forgot to look at his pants. Is he wearing leather pants? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think I didn't look. I think I meant to I think look. He'll wear this I, I got distracted, again, so I think we'll get more chances. We'll see if he's wearing leather pants. Okay. Another disapproving rumble, and Finn almost looks like he wants to chase her to administer another pep talk, but he stops himself. He looks dead inside. <laughs> and with we'll that... To be fair. <laughs> fatherhood. <laughs> yeah. And with that, she's gone, the door slamming loudly and shaking in its frame. Finn groans, running an iron hand over his face as he walks to grab the whiskey Raven had poured him. She's... Interesting. A quiet laugh as he sips his drink. <laughs> she's a pain in the ass, but she's my pain in the ass. She's your... 
I sired her, so she's my responsibility. She jokes about me being her father, but... I suppose I am, in a way. Wow. He takes a small sip of the whiskey, savoring the taste for a moment before he speaks. Though I prefer brother. Father just makes me sound so... Old? Old? <laughs> he snorts, the noise charming. Yes. Old. She tends to look after me much more than I look after her. She's a good kid. I'll, I'd be lost without her. I nod, observing him quietly as he sets down his glass. Sire bonds are powerful, and it's interesting to observe such a casual, healthy dynamic. Did you choose to turn her? He frowns, shaking his head. Well, no, not exactly. It's complicated, but I made a choice that I'll have to live with forever. Literally. I'd seen too many die at the hands of my sire, and something about her struck me. He planned to leave her for dead, but I couldn't let that happen. He smiles, and it's bright, earnest. We're kindred spirits, I guess. As much as I have regret for cursing her with her immortality, she's the closest thing I have to a family. Anyway, Sarah, what brings you to my neck of the underworld? Haha, <laughs> Nick. Um... He leans back against his desk, still cradling the glass. <laughs> Every time I watch this like, some variation on, hey, I need you, I'm like, let's go. We got this. We're going to sing it. <laughs> I watch the careful swirl of amber liquid in his glass. His eyes focus solely on me. I need you. He raises his scarred brow, dark hair falling in his face as he turns to set aside his drink. You do, hmm? <laughs> You're pervert. His smile has me rolling my eyes and I quickly try to distract myself. Let me rephrase that. I need your help. I have a plan and I think you may be of use. He laughs, a raspy chuckle. I'm all yours, Hunter. Do with me as you please. Just tell me where and when. Now and then. <laughs> I clear my throat, the double entendre making my skin feel hot. He smiles, and I know the bastard can hear the unsteady flutter of my pulse. If you could, you know that, like, if you could hear heartbeats, you would also do, do shit to people. You'd be like, what's the best? Like, I'm going to make them react. I'm going to get a reaction. Yeah. I would. I can't even blame him. <laughs> Piper and I are going to attempt to break into the dungeons beneath HQ. Yeah. His ears flicker, almost flattening against his head before they put themselves to rights. He cannot mask his surprise, nor his apparent interest. I see. The dungeons, hmm. He whistles, scuffing his boots against the stone floor. I can help you, but I may have a favor of my own to ask you if you're bold enough to venture down there. I mean, I'm bold. <laughs> I narrow my eyes at him, contemplating if I want to tangle myself into yet another web. What is it? He pushes away from the desk, standing tall. An important member of my clan has gone missing, and I'm positive they have him. As I'm sure you know, any trust for the Enforcers is wavering. I want my friend back. He's done nothing to warrant being thrown in a dungeon. His hands ball into fists at his side, his prosthetic flaring brightly before it gets into its usual dormant, dull glow. How do you know that they have him? I don't. They have an excellent defense system that prevents any of us from d detecting him, no matter how close we manage to get. He would not just abandon us. He's either detained or dead, and if it's the latter, I just want to know. You're sure he wouldn't just leave? Your clan isn't like others. Maybe he wanted a change. He looks sad, frustrated. He runs his fingers through his hair, leaving it messy. Fiero wouldn't just leave. I know he wouldn't. I trust him more than anyone else in my clan, even Raven. We both suffered at the hands of Levi for centuries. We were healing from that together. He was the only friend I had when I was with Levi, and he saved my ass more than once. I owe him this. Alright, we going. If he's ash and bone in a forest somewhere, then so be it. But if he's there, then I must save him. The only family creatures like me have are the ones you find, so I intend to keep them safe as long as I can. Alright, I need details. 
Why do you think they would take Fierro specifically, if you're so sure he's innocent? He shrugs, clearly quite confident in his theory. Because he's valuable. He's an empath, a powerful one. If he saw something he wasn't supposed to, or even if they just managed to overpower him and get him alone. A quiet growl rumbles in his chest. I rarely let my clan members patrol by themselves, regardless of our supposedly stable relationship with the enforcers of this town. But I was stupid, and Fierro's, Fierro is a good sweet talker. He sent someone in distress in the woods, so... Hmm. His shoulders sag, his eyes falling to the floor, losing their sparkle. So I allowed it. Therefore, if anything has happened to him, it's my fault. Hmm. Finn prides himself on being the opposite of his sire, and I can see that this is eating away at him. You can't place the blame on yourself. You didn't know. Plus, if he is as valuable as you say he is, his eyes light up when they meet mine, his fingers twitching upon the surface of the desk. Then they could be using him, so he's still alive. That's what I was thinking. I smile in return, tilting my head this way and that. Well, ish. He laughs, and I can't help but join him. So you'll check for me? I nod. I will. Levi time. The information on Finn's sire is sparse outside the fact that he was notorious and cruel, and I wonder how such a seemingly kind man could have followed him for that long. Do you mind talking about him? About Levi? Finn grimaces, folding his arms across his broad chest, his posture losing its usual confidence. I suppose. I take a seat on his bed as he puts out, pulls out his desk chair. The first thing I can think to ask him is loaded, but I need to understand. Why did you stay with him for so long? His mouth forms a little O, and he looks at me wide-eyed for a beat before he manages to formulate a response. Hmm. Well, I don't know if I can answer that because I still don't know. He was good at making, you sh making sure you had nothing left to go home to, so he was all I had. I'm not the kind of man who does well with loneliness. Hmm. A wry smile, but Finn looks sad, a pale film of crimson coating his golden eyes. What did he take from you? He swallows thickly, casting his gaze to the side. I mean it when I say he made sure there was nothing left. He took my fiancé, killed him right in front of me before he took his own life. Mm. Took my own life. That is so- that's fucked up. That's fucked up. I was an orphan, and I didn't have any friends, so Gabriel Gabriel was truly all I had. He destroyed our home, all of our memories, even took my name from me. That's fucked up! A laugh, but it's bitter, tinged with anger. Everything. He took it all, and he did everything to make sure that I needed him. I followed him like a lost puppy for centuries. That's fucked up! Did you ever try to escape? When you found others? He nods. Many times. I had a few blissful periods of freedom, but he always found me. He tended to collect vampires with abilities like Fierro and myself, maybe to make up for the fact that, aside from his advanced age, he was truly unremarkable. And now? He's dead and you're free. You seem to be managing well for someone who endured all of that. He sighs, rubbing the back of his neck with his iron hand. I'm trying to shape myself into the man I always wanted to be, before the whole being undead thing. I try not to dwell on the things that have happened to me. I was bitter for long enough. But the fact of the matter is that I cannot change any of it. All I can do is be the opposite of what he wanted me to be. I smile, observing him. I register how comfortable I feel in his home. The thought of stepping into the den of a clan before all of this would have set me on edge, but now... You're doing a great job, Finn. His mouth curls into an earnest grin. Thank you, Sarah. I give you permission to kick my ass if I ever dare step out of line. I will take that permission. Duly noted. So, what is it that you'd like me to do exactly? Well, no one knows this town quite as well as you. I was hoping you'd have some secret little passageway tucked away for me to use. There are wards, other things in place to stop people like you, like us, getting in. Right, but we know a guy. 
I'll worry about that. Now, about that passageway. His grin is wicked, and I think I have my answer. I'm your guy. Yeah. Just say when, and I'll be there. If you need anything else, just come running. I bid Finn farewell, and now I only need to find one more friend. Technically, we didn't. I don't think we recruited Omen. Whatever. It's I fine. saved the most well, stubborn. We don't need last. anything from Omen. He's like the only one we don't need anything from. That's <laughs> true. We're just like Omen. You stay here and try not to cause set anything on fire. Omen, you stand there and you look. You just pretty. stand there and be adorable. You just you're the moral support. <laughs> you're the morality booster. Yes. We all look at you. Yeah. <laughs> we look at you when we're feeling down and it boosts our morale. 